the James Hart Panther Choir on Wednesday, October 20th, took a field trip to the University of Illinois at Champaign-Urbana. Our first event was to attend a 10 o'clock choral conducting class for student teachers who are getting ready to go out and do their final step before they become music educators. And we performed that group and interacted with them. They sang for the student teachers and they were able to be used sort of as a demonstration group. I would ask my students to listen carefully for the way that their voices sound. The college kids need to hear that and hear what those young voices sound like and hear what they are capable of doing musically. For those of you that are in a band or orchestra and lead or choir, do you find it like, difficult to come back in for just those two days? No. I think it was kind of fun to help the college students be music teachers because it's not often that you get to help someone older than yourself learn something. I felt very important. You know, I felt really like, wow, we're actually teaching them something instead of them it's teaching us something. How many did you plan on seeing in high school when you get there? Being able to have them ask questions, that made us think a little bit, and it was, I think, beneficial to them and our, uh, each other. I think the main thing is the boys' voices. Historically in music education, the approach to young men when their voices changed was just don't touch them, leave them alone, don't make them sing. When they have healed, we'll let them back in choir high school. But then about in the late 80s, early 90s, music educators began to say no, those middle school kids can sing and there's different approaches to them and how you do it and we can give them an opportunity to sing. I think they learned a lot because uh, they were kind of surprised and they liked the choir. I never thought about being a music teacher before, but I did love music and seeing how the class went on. Um, I might be a music teacher now. After we were done with that one hour class, the students broke into small groups and they took a tour of the Cranert Performing Arts Center, not only the main Great Hall, but the small individual theaters, the set background, where the costumes are made, and they got a lot of background from the docents that we had that took us around. This theater was specifically designed for spoken word production. I had no idea there were so many reasons why they designed it like that, but seeing the upper level where it was all fancy, that was, that was pretty cool. The best part was when we got to look at the stages and the performing places. And it was like really cool how we got to learn like what all like they do behind the scenes and how they get everything to look so amazing. And what I'm working on today is I'm creating the lighting cues for the, uh, for the plays. The tour of Cranor was so amazing, like all the theaters and how big they are. I totally want to be on that stage someday. Always when you take students off property, you're always going to have something happen. And every trip I've ever had, something has happened, and this was the one this time. And just got done with the tour, and we all were sitting down, and then all of a sudden, like, the, this music was just blasting. And this one lady just went crazy. She was dancing all over the floor. So, like, we're sitting there, like, begging to just go dance, and then they let us, and we all just run over there and start cutting loose. It was amazing. It was totally unexpected, and nobody knew that that was going to happen. And I thought it was really cool that um, the college kids invited us up. In a perfect world, I would have planned it if I'd known, because it let them jump around and do something. We got all that energy out, and then we went to go sing. We ended the day with a one-hour class with Dr. Joe Grant, who just retired as head of the music education department at the University of Illinois and he worked with our kids specifically on techniques and things that would make our choir stronger. Be body aware, sense where your ribs are right now. Let your hands come down and leave your ribs up. Now sing for me. No, 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 breathe in. No. I tend to want all of them to sing with a light, 
a clear tone. We're trying to get them to use their voices in a healthy way so that they'll last for a lifetime. He taught us some um, techniques for singing that we hadn't heard before, and it's helped improve our choir. There are black clothes taking Macy's Day balloons. There are just a few threads holding them on the ground. The people whose tone is flabby and out of tune look like this. He taught us to be like a balloon, like to push out our chest. We learned how to make our sound more full, kind of the raise your chest thing. It, it was able to almost double our sound by the time we had left. I learned that you take a breath out before you take a breath in to clear your lungs, clear your mind, and just focus on the music. Dr. Grant gave them a rehearsal for about 50, 55 minutes and he worked on the pieces that we had brought down and he corrected spots where he felt there should be changes or he gave them alternative ways of interpreting the pieces. I'm really more interested in making sure that they recall and are thoughtful that, yeah, this was fun in middle school, but I, that'll be enough. No, you know, it's a lifetime thing. I just kind of have to mature into my voice and learn some of the lessons on my own. But a lot of lessons that I learned to be a good singer, I learned from him and Miss Olsen. And I think that's pretty special. Yeah.